The presence component is an excellent and efficient way to bring a little bit of life to your application. Using it, you can show which users are currently online or offline, much like you would see in Google Docs or Figma. Getting started with it is super easy. Just use npm install convex dev slash presence in uh, one of your existing convex projects. And if you don't have a convex project yet, check out one of the quick start guides in the convex documentation. So once installed, you'll need to set up the component. First, create a file called convex.config.ts in your convex directory and add some code that looks a bit like this. So here we can see that we can import the presence component and then we're going to define an app and tell it that we want to use that component. So once you've done that, we can go ahead and define some uh, mutations and queries. So the first thing we did here was to create a presence object. So this will be your interface into the presence component. And then from there, we can use it to create a, a heartbeat mutation and a list query and a disconnect mutation. We'll come back to look at those in a bit more detail in a minute, but for right now, let's have a look at how we use those from the client side. So here we have a very simple React application. So we're going to create a random user ID on startup here, and then we're going to pass that into the use presence hook down here. Um, we'll look how to do this user ID management uh, a little bit more properly in a minute. But then as part of this use presence hook, we're going to also give it the API that we just def defined on the server side. Um, we're going to give it a room ID, which for now is just going to be a constant, but you can imagine different room IDs depending upon what document you're looking at, if it's a Google Docs kind of app. And then we're going to get the result back from the hook, which is basically just our present state, which we're going to then pass to this handy React component that the um, presence component gives us. Now, we don't have to use that face file component. The present state is just an array of user uh, present state objects. So we could very easily just render whatever React components you want in here. But anyway, let's see this in action now. Great, so we can just see that there's one person online right now, which is me. Then if I open up another tab alongside the app, we will see that two faces appear. And if I hover over the face, we get this little tooltip here that shows us what our current user ID is and what our present status is. This is great, but note what happens if I reload the page in one of these tabs. We'll see another user appear and then another and then another and then another as we keep refreshing the page. So if we hop back to the code, this, this kind of makes sense, right? As we are creating a new random user ID each time we reload the page. So what we need really is we need a way to fix that user ID for each person that visits our app. Now there's lots of ways you could fix this, but the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to pull in convex auth. And for the purpose of this video, I'm going to skip over exactly how you set up convex auth. If you'd like more on that, please check out the convex auth documentation, which I've linked down below. Okay, so now the application has been set up uh, so that you have to first sign up with a username and password. And once you've done that, you should be able to see your presence information. And instead of that random user ID from before, we now have the email address of the person that I signed up with. Nice. And if I pop open another tab and I sign in with a different user, we will see the other user appear on the first tab. And if I refresh the page now, we'll see a brief disconnect as the page refreshes, and then we'll see the user come back online again. And if I sign out of one tab, we'll see that that user is no longer present. Very, very nice. So now let's take a little quick look at how we managed to achieve this. So the first thing you'll notice is that the app component has now been split so that it either renders the auth page if there's no current user or the dashboard page if there is one. And we're not going to go into details of the auth page right here um, as it's just standard convex auth stuff. Again, just check out the convex auth documentation if you'd like to see more about this. So the key thing to know is that we now have a stable user ID that is going to persist through reloads of the page because the user authenticated. So with that user ID, we're going to pass it into this dashboard component here, um, which internally looks almost exactly the same as before, except we're now, rather than having a random user ID created, we're now taking that user ID and then passing it into the user presence hook um, as, as before. So now we've done that, let's take a little closer look at those server-side functions that we defined before. So the first is the heartbeat mutation. Um, this is the function that the client is going to call that's going to periodically let us know that that client is still present. And you'll notice from before that there's now an auth check at the top here that we didn't have before. It's because now that we do have the auth information, we can add a little bit of security here to make sure that one user cannot send the heartbeat information for another user. Um, 
I'm not sure why you would want to do this, but it's always good practice to lock down what users can access and what they can't. And while we're on this heartbeat mutation, let's take a little look at um, the parameters to this heartbeat function here. So we have the room ID and the user ID, um, but then we also have the session ID, which is used as part of the disconnection logic. But then we also have the interval here. And the interval is described when we hover over it as interval is the time between heartbeats. User will be disconnected if no heartbeat is received for 2.5 times the interval or if a graceful disconnect message is received. Which makes sense really. This basically just defines how long until we're classed as disconnected, like if somebody pulls out the power from their computer without gracefully disconnecting from the browser. So as we are talking about disconnect, let's have a quick scroll down and have a look at the disconnect mutation. So this function is going to be called by the client right before the tab closes and is done using a really cool but little known API called the Beacon API, which is actually part of the web spec. But anyways, um, back to our code and the final function to look at is this list query. This is going to return all the present state for the users that we want to display on the client. So at the top, once again, we're going to do a little bit of security check. We're going to make sure you're authenticated before allowing you to use this function. Then we're going to use the presence component to list all of the present states from the database. And just while I'm here, I should note that there is a third parameter we could potentially supply to this presence.list function that's going to limit the number of users uh, that are returned. Right now it's defaulted to around about 100, which seems fine. So I'll just leave that parameter off for now. So once we have those states from the presence component, um, what we're going to do is in parallel, so using the promise all here, we're going to look up each one of those users by the ID from our auth users table. And then if it's there, we're going to set the name for the return present state with, as the user's email. And we could also here like return an avatar image if we wanted, but we don't have that as we're just doing simple email password authentication for now. But if we were going to do like GitHub or Google login, then you would have an avatar that which we could set here and then show on the client. And finally, we just filter out any nulls that may have happened up here. And then we just return the, the array. And that's about it. We have a rather simple but powerful and efficient presence capability for our app. And it only took a few minutes of work. So on that efficiency point, you should expect to use about one mutation every 10 seconds for every session that's connected. That's for that heartbeat. And then one query per room whenever somebody joins or leaves plus another single mutation for any time that you leave. So in my opinion, a very reasonable amount of cost for the amount of functionality that we're adding here. All right, so that's about it for me for now. I hope you liked this video. And if you did and you want to see more of this sort of thing, then do get subscribed as I post regularly to this channel this kind of useful content. And if you do have a question, please do leave me a comment down below. I read every single one and I try and respond to most. And if you want to watch another video on convex components, you might want to check out this one that I did on the aging component recently, which is a super powerful component that lets, gets you going quickly when building an AI app. So thanks for watching. Until next time, cheerio.